Hello, this is Dr. Lawrence Culver in the History Department at Utah State University, and today I'm going to talk about tourists, tuberculosis, and sickness in the land of sunshine. We, in 2020, are currently experiencing the coronavirus pandemic, which is both a public health crisis and increasingly an economic crisis. But today I want to talk about uh, an earlier episode in American history when disease was actually a reason for economic growth and in fact inspired some forms of recreation that Americans still enjoy today. So for a very long time, human beings thought that disease was caused by environmental forces. The word malaria, for example, is just Italian for bad air. The idea that evil or somehow infected atmospheres could infiltrate the human body and make people sick. By the later 19th century, it was clear increasingly that disease was instead caused by bacteria and by germs. By the 1880s, this German physician, Robert Koch, had discovered the bacteria that causes tuberculosis, a disease that had afflicted human beings for centuries. But tuberculosis was unusual in that people could test positive for this bacteria and their symptoms could range from rapid worsening to the point of death, illness followed by a full recovery, episodic relapsing illness, and indeed some people who tested positive for the bacterium but never developed the illness. As a result, tuberculosis alone was one disease that remained uh, associated with environmental factors for decades longer, really until the time of World War I. And especially people thought that the environment might play a role in curing or mitigating tuberculosis. People believed that dry air, uh, high elevation, moderate temperatures, uh, all of these things might help uh, aid in the recovery from tuberculosis. So tuberculosis sufferers, often called consumptives, relocated to places like Colorado Springs uh, or Tucson in Arizona, and a very large number relocated here to Southern California. Indeed, from 1875 to 1900, when Los Angeles and Southern California first began to boom um, as a destination for American migrants, Fully 25% of the people who moved there were health migrants. They suffered primarily from tuberculosis and other respiratory illnesses. Southern California was pro promoted above all for its climate, uh, for a balmy climate that meant that you didn't experience winter, that summer was not terribly hot, uh, the humidity was low. And this climate not only facilitated health, but also wealth. Uh, this was a place where you could grow things like oranges and lemons, crops that in earlier eras had been extremely expensive luxuries, hard to attain. Now you could grow these things in your own backyard. So South Southern California was promoted as the land of sunshine, the cornucopia of the world, uh, and the climate drew huge numbers of migrants, including people, as I said, who were suffering from tuberculosis. Many of these people went to sanitariums, like those pictured here. The desperately ill were, of course, bedridden, but other people who were healthier were encouraged to go outside and exercise, and most especially to take the sun. The idea being that exercise and sun exposure would improve their health and potentially cure them. For a long time, we assumed that TB sufferers who said they felt better were experiencing some kind of false placebo effect. But only in the last 20 or 25 years has it become so clear how important vitamin D is to our immune response. Many of these white Americans had avoided sun exposure their whole lives. If you were middle class or wealthy, sun exposure implied working outside and poverty. Indeed, redneck is still an insult uh, in American English today. So for the first time, these people were generating large amounts of vitamin D. Uh, and many of them probably did, in fact, feel better uh, in ways that, that was not just a placebo effect, but was definitely for real. One of the places some of these TB sufferers went was a small oasis in the Coachella Valley in inland Southern California, uh, a place that local Indians, Kawiyas, called Sekche, 
or boiling water. This was translated into Agua Caliente by the Spanish. And this became the name of the band of Cahuilla Indians who lived in this vicinity of this oasis. This place, which was central to their tribal identity and tribal survival, would become the basis of the future resort community of Palm Springs. The small hot spring and also water in the Indian Canyon, Palm Canyon, Taquiz Canyon, other canyons on the flanks of the San Jacinto Mountains that had year-round water, and the only palm trees uh, indigenous to the western United States, the only palm trees indigenous to Southern California. Uh, these water resources were immensely important to the tribe's survival. They also drew outsiders. One example was the McCollum family, the first white settlers in the vicinity of Palm Springs. They relocated here both to access the Agua Caliente's water and also because one of their sons was suffering from tuberculosis. The son died, but one of their daughters, Pearl McCollum McManus, would return. Her family still owned land in the area and she would open one of the early resort hotels, the Oasis Hotel on Palm Drive. Uh, in Palm Springs. The most important figure in the founding of Palm Springs as a resort was this person, Nellie Kaufman. Nellie Kaufman relocated to Palm Springs with her husband and opened a small uh, hotel for consumptives called the Desert Inn. But in 1914, she and her husband split and divorced. Her husband was a doctor, a physician who treated TB patients. But by 1914, Nellie Kaufman had decided that she did not want to reopen the hotel to TB victims. She instead wanted to reopen it as purely a tourist resort, and that's what she did in the season of 1915. By this point, it was widely understood that tuberculosis was a communicable disease, and after decades of actively trying to draw consumptives and other health migrants, Southern California and other regions largely shunned them from this point forward. The Desert Inn was a small, humble place in its beginnings, but would rapidly become a large and luxurious resort uh, as Palm Springs first drew Southern Californians, and then Hollywood, and then the world. By the 1940s and 1950s, it was one of the best known resorts in the world, uh, spawning a whole variety of desert resort communities in the Coachella Valley spreading out from Palm Springs. And among the forms of recreation that Palm Springs tourists enjoyed was sunbathing and outdoor recreation. These are forms of recreation and leisure that had really begun and had been fostered by those TB sanitariums and the argument for environmental exercise, environmental therapy and outdoor exercise is a way to combat the disease. So these once purported cures for tuberculosis were now pr promoted forms of recreation. By the 1950s, Palm Springs became one of the richest resort communities in the United States, drawing wealthy people who built homes like the Kaufman family who built this house. The Kaufmans also commissioned Frank Lloyd Wright to build their other vacation home, Falling Water. Or this home, the Raymond Lowy House in Palm Springs. Uh, here you can see the living room carpet in the foreground and the swimming pool that stretches from the living room out into the backyard and beyond into the desert landscape. Raymond Lowy was the most, most famous commercial uh, designer in mid-century America. He designed everything from the iconic Coca-Cola bottle to the upholstery on Pan Am jetliners. The Agua Calientes, despite uh, generations of poverty, despite exposure to disease and indeed uh, smallpox, smallpox epidemic that took a heavy toll during World War I, the Agua Calientes held onto their land and held onto their water. Indeed, their tribal lands underlay much of the booming resort town. And by the 1950s, with the first all-female tribal council of any uh, tribal group in the United States, the Agua Calientes pursued tourism revenue on their own. 
building a spa and resort hotel atop their original uh, hot spring oasis. Now, in the summer of 2010, 2020, uh, the Agua Calientes are unveiling a new tribal project. The Agua Calientes prospered uh, with the tourist trade and even more so with the legalization of Indian gaming and the emergence of casino gambling on their reservation. So now they are opening a new Oasis Plaza on the site of the original hot spring with the water now uncovered and again flowing freely. In between two structures that might seem surprising, uh, a new Agua Caliente Cultural Museum, which will be one of the largest Native American museums in the country, and a brand new spa uh, drawing upon the long associations with health and leisure and recreation that have come to epitomize Palm Springs. But in reality, both of these places are tied back to the hot spring uh, that the tribe is named for, the hot spring that was their lifeblood for centuries and is still central to their identity and history in the 21st century. So in all those ways, uh, the unlikely history of tuberculosis tourism and the role of, of TB in the growth in Southern California and in the development of resort leisure in Southern California uh, helps highlight not only the sort of unexpected history of disease in America and how deep and complex that history is, but also the unlikely history of tuberculosis in the history of the development of Southern California, the history of Palm Springs, the history of leisure and outdoor recreation, and indeed, in many ways, the history of modern America. Thanks for listening.